Day two is coming to an end, and another very interesting day. Ford started off um, with the press briefing this morning, and Mark Fields took the stage at Ford. And surprisingly, no announcement was made on the Google, and he very quietly averted any questions on that. But a very interesting partnership was announced with Velodyne. So Ford is adopting the third-gen solid-state puck, as Velodyne calls it, and probably at a much, much lower cost. And that is going to be very, very crucial for their autonomous driving efforts um, that they are planning to roll out. Now, besides that, Ford also unveiled a lot of interesting stuff around the connected home integration products, like their partnership with Amazon Echo and trying to bring that through the AppLink platform. Very, very interesting because no other OEM is looking at it at this scale. The other interesting thing that Ford, little gimmicky, was the drone experiment that they are trying, planning to do on the F-150 but that remains to be seen if it's commercially viable. Now the next interesting um, briefing was from Toyota. They officially unveiled the Toyota Research Institute, which is a billion dollar artificial intelligence research platform that has been co-developed with Stanford and MIT for now. Now very interesting because what Toyota plans to do with that research institute is use AI for a number of different applications, one of which is of course bringing more safety to their vehicles, but the other one is bringing autonomy to the physically challenged, um, automated solutions for the physically challenged. And the third one is applying AI for material sciences. Now, cut after that, the, the other interesting press briefing was the AT&T Developer Summit. AT&T officially announced Ford as a customer, starting with the 2017 Ford Escape. And the commitment from Ford is to take that to almost 10 million vehicles in the next few years, which, is, which takes them to a massive volume. Now with that, AT&T officially takes anywhere between 60 to 70 percent or more of the embedded LTE market in cars. But besides that, AT&T had a very interesting announcement around Smart City. Uh, their Smart City platform is up and running and live and they announced Atlanta, Chicago and Dallas as three customers. Now, the other interesting briefing was from Kia. Now, remember Kia in 2015 had a record year they sold in excess of 600,000 vehicles in the US. But traditionally, Kia has been a little slow when it comes to safety technologies, and especially any, any technologies with respect to automated driving. Now, Hyundai, very, um, let's say, a couple of months back, announced a number of initiatives around automated driving, like building their own chips and having something ready by 2030. Now, Kia has followed suit and Kia just announced a number of different ADAS applications and automated driving efforts. Partial automation which will be fulfilled by 2020 and full automation that will be fulfilled by 2030. Now Kia is taking a very incremental approach to automation. They have gotten a license from Nevada DMV to test their vehicles over here. And if you see the rooster of features that they are bringing, it starts with a very basic emergency braking to forward collision warning to lane keeping assist and then gradually building that up to traffic jam assist and advanced levels of autonomy. Now, we believe this is the model that most OEMs will go after. Day two, we witnessed some very interesting press events from the likes of Ford, Toyota, Kia, further emphasizing their commitment to automated driving. Toyota today officially unveiled Toyota Research Institute in partnership with Stanford and MIT, working on artificial intelligence, robotics, and deep learning. GM announced today that it's building its own maps for automated driving. Now, the backbone to this is using the multiple sensors that they are building into the vehicle and the OnStar network and the LTE connection to kind of build a continuously updated map. Now, GM is not alone in this effort. Toyota announced earlier that they are into a similar effort. Tesla is already doing it for its autopilot. Now, how this compares versus what here is unveiling their HD Live Maps and what other new vendors like GeoDigital are doing remains to be seen, but the volume of vehicles that these guys have on the road, like GM and Toyota, will give them a huge up on this. Now, interestingly, the Samsung press conference was expected. There was an expectation that they'll mention about their new automotive business, but no mention was made about that. It turned out to be a completely consumer electronics show talking about the new televisions and so on. And finally, the interesting part, after all this, the key themes that come out, again, A, autonomous driving, is in the mind or is in the product roadmap of every OEM that you can think of. 
Now, most OEMs, especially the big volume makers like Kia or Ford, are taking a very incremental stepped approach to this. and They are carefully weighing out different sensor options. Now, that is what we believe most OEMs will do, and that's what we have outlined in our research as well. And the other interesting announcement was Harman making a third acquisition in less than a year. And they have acquired now Towersec, a leading cybersecurity company, for about $75 million. Now again, Harman is beefing up on the software side, especially this acquisition adds to their 5 plus 1 security framework. And they are build, going up to be a powerhouse on the software side. Other tier ones, not so much. Um, and it, this is a space where we expect more inorganic activity from other tier ones. And finally, the, the last interesting part is LiDAR is turning out to be a very interesting sensor. Now, Velodyne has announced their third gen solid state. We expect Quanergy to announce their third gen solid state, all relatively less priced than the $80,000 sweeping ones that they have in the vehicles. And last but not least, um, there are a few more interesting press briefings yet to happen. Volkswagen is expected to announce their microbus EV concept and GM is doing their keynote tomorrow. Mary Barra is expected to add more weight around their investment into Lyft and many other, let's say, unveiling that will happen, including the Chevy Bolt. Now, interestingly, on a final note, while most OEMs like Ford or the Germans are taking a very organic approach to developing mobility solutions, GM has taken a rather inorganic approach by investing into Lyft. Now, what benefits this provides to both the companies remains to be seen. But nevertheless, mobility is picking up as a sustainable business at most OEMs.